Pablo González, Quantum Kieran for Quantum And of course, something happened here. Uh, yeah. oh. Can you? <laughs> I put infinity time, I'm sure I put infinity time. It's, um, it's my duty as the last speaker and for you to actually thank the organizers for the beautiful conference. So thank you very much. Thank you. I, know, I know most of you have to leave, so I'm going to keep this short and there. Uh, so the whole idea of the, the talk is going to be just an announcement really of some work in progress that I have with Chris Woodward in the same line of the things that we've been working in the past. Um, 10 years or so, which is you know, um, a quantization of equivalent tools in some sense. And uh, so the, the setup is as, follow, as follows. So I'm going to take a projective smooth variety and uh, with a polarization, so that sets, I, I have certain control of the reducibility condition, but I will tell you that in a, in a moment. And then G is going to be a reductive acting on, on X. So there are two quotients that will play an important role. The quotient stack that you already they all have here plenty of it. And then the GIT quotient, which is you know, given by whenever you, you have um, a, a polarization, then that in, gives you a sensibility condition on uh, the, the sense of movement. And then you just take the, the GIT quotient by taking the semi stable points, semi stable locus, and then divide by G. And uh, in general, you, you know, the setup uh, it works in greater generalities. So, for instance, for today, I'm just going to assume. The quotient to be smooth, and uh, but you can assume that this is a little more stack, you know, something a tiny bit worse. Oh, for instance, we're thinking at the moment also instead of having a projective smooth variety, so just allowing local complete intersections, for instance. Um, and the two examples that I want to, to discuss today is essentially the Grassmannian, which is a GIT just given by the matrices, okay, of size k by n, and then divide by the changing basis, and that gives you k planes at cn. And uh, toric varieties of, of all types, essentially, but of course, in the case that this is smooth, so I'm going to take just you know, Cn, which is an affine space, and then divide it by, by the standard torus. Um, you may say, well, you ask x to be projective, and then you have, you have an affine thing. Also works in that case. <coughs> okay, so there is nothing to, to worry about. So um, the main motivation to study quantum k theory for us is because we want to um, do a complete and actually explicit computations. Uh, there are many works at the moment, like for instance, work by Okunkov and Moloch, where they really want to extract explicit information of the quantum key theory of quiver varieties, for instance. So this is more or less our main motivation. And uh, that's uh, what we're going to do. And so the theorem that I, I want to announce is, you know, with the tools that I will present later on, is we can actually do an explicit computation of the quantum key theory of both the, the Grassmannian and the, the, the quantum key theory of the Doric varieties, um, smooth Doric varieties. And for the Grassmannian, it's just given by what you would expect. You know, you have the universal and the, the, the universal um, quotient bundles over the Grassmannian. And then um, the quantum key theory is just given by the growth in the, the total growth in the chart class of the sum. This is a trivial sum, of course. Um, and then uh, twisted by or corrected by, by Q, right here. And this is the, the just the growth in the chunk classes of the universal bundle. And for uh, the toric varieties, is essentially, you know, as, as you may, may imagine, uh, you split Cn, which is the affine space that you have in here, and representations of the torus, okay. And then you break it in the, the representation, you attach some uh, novical variables, and then the relations you, you will expect, which are the bacteria relations actually hold in this case as well. Um, uh, that's more or less what they, it's isomorphic in this case, of to a change of variables, so we'll explain that in a second. This is essentially given by the battery um, relations. So the, the main tool that we use and we have used in the past you know, to, to do all these computations is um, the study of gauge maps. So remember that Gromopitan theory studies maps that go from a curve into, into um, the space, right? So this is or less the stack that you study. So if there is an action um, involved and then you're studying maps into the GIT quotient, so in particular the GIT quotient is a soft stack of the, the quotient stack, and then you take the equivalent, uh, equivalent lifts of maps that go into, into the, the GIT quotient, and then these maps that appear here just couples, that is a principal bundle with the curve that you have, and then um, a, a G-equivalent map 
Right? So they are given by this first. And so the, the, the technique is you process an instability condition in order to obtain a very good stack. And then uh, once you have that instability condition, then you essentially push this instability so that the maps take values in this stable of effects. And then in that particular um, case, you can relate um, the, 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 G, the gromov witten theory of the quotient, the GIT quotient, with this um, gromov witten theory, or the, the counts above for the covariant maps. And so this is more or less what the, the philosophy of the theory is. So the semi-stability condition that we use is called Mundet semi-stability because it was introduced by, by Ignacio Mundet in this symplectic geometry side. And um, uh, it generalizes semi-stability for principal G bundles, which was introduced by Ramanathan on the, the GIT so the theory of um, X, which is essentially introduced by Mom. Um, so the setup is as follows. Uh, well, uh, at least the, the idea is I'm going to fix a degree, and in this case it's a degree in the portion of the stack, and you take the homology of um, that, that, that curve. And then it, let's suppose that we can construct this um, modulized space of some stable objects okay, of H maps, and then the evaluations. So if you add markings, and then let's assume that you can compactify, then um, you can um, take evaluations, uh, the markings, and then you will have um, the, you know, the, 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 you will see that they can take values in the quotient stack in this way. And so the theory for the Grom Witten theory, as I was saying, for the GIT quotient is already w well known, but w the one that we can relate with gauge Grom Witten theory is not really just the Grom Witten theory. Um, it's, it's not all the Grom Witten theory affects mod mod G, but there's rather some sort of the one for the graph space. These are called um, graphs because um, if you are fixing a, a principal component, of the, the, the moduli, and then um, you are letting the, the uh, so, and then you are asking that the degree of this maps is one in the portion that is over C, and then of degree D in the rest. And so, um, that that's more or less the theory. So, we want to relate these two, these two um, type of spaces. And so, the, the question that arose is once you push this immensability condition to infinity in order to relate these two spaces, they are not related on the nodes, but rather they have certain corrections. And these corrections are what you know, some people already know. They, they, they account for some mirror symmetry phenomenon. And uh, that, that's what the, 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 the corrections are. So the corrections, we, we call them affine gauge maps, because what they are is essentially maps that go from, from the, projective, the projective curve into the quotient stack, but with the point at infinity uh, mapping into the semi-stable locus. Okay, so this is the way you connect the, the GIT quotient with the gauge maps. And then, um, so you can think of this as the semi-severity condition for these things. And we call them affine because you are only uh, divided by affine automorphisms. So you fix it. Okay, and so there are two evaluation maps. The evaluations are the markings go into the, the it, excuse me, the evaluation of the markings go into the, this should be X mod G to the N. So they take values in the quotient stack. And then the evaluation at infinity takes values to the GIT quotient. Mm -hmm. and so this is more or less the, the, the correlation. So to, to um, do all these relations about these three spaces, the gauge maps, the, the, um, the, the usual stable maps that go into the GIT quotient with corrections in the fine gauge maps, we need a cobordism. And this cobordism is what we call, uh, it is a geometric cobordism, and they are essentially gauge maps with, with an extra condition that tells you what type of semi-stability to use um, in each one of the components. And uh, th this, uh, th this is just given by X information that you can think of it as being as an area form in the, in, the, in the principal component of the curve that you have. And it's just given by a section of, so for instance, if C is a, a, stable, a stable curve with a principal, with a, has this principal component to be isomorphic to, to C, that we are fixing at the moment. So you just take the dualizing sheaf and then you projectilize it and take a section of it. And that's essentially this map is giving you a way of controlling the semi-stability that you have. And that tells you what type of semi-stability to choose. So you can think of um, the, the, this space as uh, you know, um, being composed by, uh, uh, so, so the combinatorics of this thing is given by a you know, stable map. But the, there is a root component that has this principal um, portion that is isomorphic to the original curve that you have. And then um, the, the this scaling goes from infinity to zero, and the only way you can, uh, and the semi-stability condition over here, or, or some condition that we impose, 
is that um, it can only go from infinity to, to zero, so it's some sort of decreasing in this, in this way, but there is only one portion on which the, the scaling is, is uh, finite. Okay, so this is uh, one of the conditions that we ask. And so this is essentially the diagram. You can think of this. One of my collaborators, uh, Pablo Solis, um, calls it a spider because you have like the body of the spider here, and then the legs go down. You know, when they touch the bottom, then that's when the scaling is essentially zero. Okay, so then th this gives you a natural geometric bordism between all these modular spaces. <coughs> And so the, the theorem that one needs to, to prove, of the theorem that, that we have, is that um, th there is a canonical morphism. Uh, by the way, this is a terrible mistake, right? I will tell you what. So if you take um, a, a point in this modularized space, so this, this cobordism, you just forget everything else and then you just map to the, to the, um, the scaling. Okay. And this has to be C here. So there is, remember that there is a fixed principal component of the moduli. And so what happens is that um, this map, uh, if you look at the inverse image at zero, you, the only thing that you get is the, the gauge maps. And as you push this scaling to infinity, so the point of infinity, then you will get um, all this combination of the maps that go into the GIT quotient and then these correction terms that are affine gauge maps. And so the, the theorem is really this. Okay, so the, the fiber at uh, infinity is given by, by um, this combination of four possibilities that you have. So you have all these correction terms that are appearing there. And so these correction terms in, um, in, in the classical uh, you know, literature, in, in, in uh, mirror symmetry is what they call the mirror map of given time. Okay. Well, they will give you those, those combinations. And so uh, this is completely geometric, so you can apply it to your favorite theory. Um, the theory that I'm going to talk about uh, you know, I've been working on lately is quantum gate theory. So quantum gate theory is the same as quantum cohomology in some sense. However, the, the, uh, the only difference is that, you know, it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't uh, have a device of action, for instance, because there's no grading. You know, you have to be a time more careful how, how to do these things. But you still, um, you know, since you have any predictive variety and then the moduli of, of maps has a, a perfect obstruction theory, then you can construct a virtual fundamental sheaf, which is not really a sheaf, but it's an element in the drive category of coherent shifts over the modular space, and then you can just bundle all the, the, um, the uh, numbers that you will get here. In this case, these are uh, all, the, all the characteristics, all, all the numbers of uh, taking, so if, you, so if you take an element to the quantum gate theory, you just multiply by itself several times, you correct it by the, uh, all the, the virtual fundamental shift, and then you take all the, all the characteristic of this thing, and then that gives you an element in the, in the um, integers. So that's very different from what happens in quantum cohomology, where all the, the global witten invariants um, are rational. You know, in this case, they are actually integers. So that's an advantage they have. So you bundle this into a potential function that is just a generated function of all the um, of these numbers, which are the k-theoretic global witten invariants. And then um, you have also pairing. So once you have this potential, you can take derivatives. So the second derivatives, in, if you have two di directions in, in um, in the quantum K theory, in the K theory, then the second derivative gives you a pairing, which is both the form in the direction of this value that appears in here. So uh, that's another difference with quantum cohomology. In quantum cohomology, the pairing doesn't really, it is not quantized. So the, the Frobenius um, structure in quantum cohomology has a pairing that is the same everywhere in all the fibers. In this case, the quantum product is, is quantized. So that's a big difference in the Frobenius structure. And then once you have this pairing, you can take the quantum product that's just being given by the triple derivatives that being So it's essentially the same definition, but there are some, some differences. As I was mentioning, there is no device of axiom. And therefore, the computations um, get a lot messier than you would expect. So um, you can do the same thing with, with if a group is acting on your variety, for instance, then you get some equivalent potent K theoretic potential, and you can also look at the graphs, and then you get the, the the graph potential for the DAT quotient. And so the relation that we want to obtain is essentially that. So um, that cobordism, the geometric cobordism that I described at the beginning, will give you a diagram of this form. Okay, so the, in this in this um, this arrow here is uh, all the, the potential that is given by the gauge common with invariance. In this side you have the graph potential that is given by just the usual K theory for the GH quotient. And these correction terms, the corrections that appear in the in, by the fine um, the, the, the fine pitch maps, is what um, you can think of the correction. 
So this diagram does not really commute because as you move and you go in this cobordism, you may find some wall crossing terms. But um, essentially what this tells you is that if you use that cobordism, you can precisely tell what is the non-commutativity um, for, for this diagram. So they have some contributions from wall crossing. But anyway, so this map, as I was saying before, is the, the, the quantum pure one map, and it's just given by the full push construction. So you take a class in the equivalent K theory, quantum K theory, you pull it back over the moduli of a fine um, uh, of high gauge maps, and then you push forwards uh, that what you get using the evaluation of infinity, and then you get this map, it's a well-defined map, and the theorem which um, it can be used by, by taking the polarization. The polarization so far is hidden in all of this, because I keep talking about the GIT quotient, and in that case, it's, it's hidden in there. But now it will play an important role, because essentially I didn't tell you what the semi-stability condition is on the gauge maps. But that's where it, 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 it's important. But if you take the polarization to go to infinity, then, then this diagram will commute. Okay, and that's the important part. So, um, well, in G the, for the GIT quotient, that doesn't really matter. The only thing that you are varying whenever you increase the polarization is that the embedding that you will get, you know, the linearization that you get, it just increases. Is um, yeah, uh, uh, that's the only difference? But for gauge maps, it does have, it does make a difference. Well, um, whew, uh, how much? Uh, ten, five, five more minutes. Okay. All right. So just very quickly, they, they, um, they, just to explain why the, when you go to infinity, things go to the GAT quotient is um, the semi-stability condition for gauge maps have a contribution that come from the bundle, as I was saying, so you can think of this as the um, uh, 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 term that comes from the Ramanathan uh, semi-stability. So uh, to define semi-stability for bundles, you need a, par a parabolic production, and you need a one-parameter subgroup that, you know, for which whenever you take the limit, the, the bundles exist. But let's suppose that you believe me that there is some sort of a, um, a numerical criterion for that semi-stability, and then there is another term that comes from the numerical criterion for the semi-stability of x, and that's the only thing that you have to do is essentially to take the sum of the two of them. But then if you increase the semi-stability for the target for x, then as the, that semi-stability increases, then this um, number will go, will increase, will, will scale with that. So for, for the, you know, that doesn't really make any difference if this term doesn't exist, but if the two of them pair, then as this goes to infinity, then this, this will affect the whole, um, the whole sub subject. So that, that probably, um, you can see that that's equivalent to killing this term, and therefore this one, um, we double for, for the points to be um, going to, to infinity. But, okay, so I was going to talk about um, some compactification. I, I should just tell you that all these maps, are, all, all these moduli spaces are proper. I wanted to tell you that there is a relation with the quote scheme, but I, I will um, avoid that. Let, let me do an example, and then probably I will finish with that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, let's consider the action of C star on C3, right? And so with the standard weight action 111, in that case, the, the GIT quotient um, would be the, the standard projective space with the usual linearization. And then in that case, um, the, the, let's take degree one. So the, the bundle that you have to, to take, right? So it would be of degree one, and so the associated bundle would be um, a one that, so the equivalent maps that you take whenever you're thinking of gauge maps are just sections of this bundle, which are just polynomials, right? Of, um, degree one, three, three pairs of polynomials of degree one. And so it's essentially this model is is given by the regularization of this thing. Um, and since there is no bubbling, you can just you know multiply by if you add a marking. So the gauge maps with with um, which are fine, right? So they, they must satisfy this uh, semi-stability condition, and the semi-stability condition is that the evaluation at infinity should go into the semi-stable locus. The semi-stable locus is the non-zero points of um, C three, and so they have to obey this this condition that I present. So, um, and then with this diagram that appears in here, you can essentially do computations already. So for instance, um, since X is already a vector space, then you can think of it as a C star representation, and then it splits as representations. So, uh, it is a copy, it's three copies of the representation of point one. So it's already an element in the, in the quantum, in the K theory, the quantum K theory of the point. And so evaluation at zero, okay, so the evaluation at zero, the one that takes 
uh, any, any polynomial of this form into P1, P2, and P3 will give you a section of the pullback of um, evaluation of zero of, of uh, X3. Okay, and so with that in mind, then if you want to compute the, the, um, the, the, the shift, the, the fundamental shift of the, that it will contribute for the counts that you are looking for, you just have to take all the classes just because this is a section and you are taking the inverse image of the, the zero in that, then that's just the only class of the of pullback evaluation of this X, X1 to the Q. But this is a representation of wave one, so then, then that Euler class is just one minus X1 dual cubed. And then since this contributes to the, um, the uh, a fine maps with one point, that tells you that this is essentially the image of the, or, or that the, the, this is in the kernel of the quantum curve one map with the of degree one. And so that's how we obtain the relations. So this, this is the relation that appears in the projective, um, for instance, the projective space. Uh, let me go back to the battery of relations. This one. So, for instance, this one, um, there is no, there is no negative weight. So you just kill that, and then it will be just this one minus x one dual to the third power equals q. Okay. And so that's how you do computations. Uh, uh, we know how to do it in the Tory case. So just very quickly, for yeah, I think I think I got prepared this, but um, so to, to get the relations in the let, let's say for the Grassmannian. What we do is what is called uh, abelianization techniques. So we know how to do it for the abelian quotient, so for toric varieties, let's say. And so since the Grassmannian is, um, a, is a, a quotient by a non-abelian group, then you can also try to relate um, what would happen if instead of that you looked into the quotient by the maximal toric, torus the, the, the for, for DK. And that's, um, that's not hard to see that um, the abelian quotient associated to the Grassmannian is just a product of PRs. And then um, we can compute certain function that is called the J function, which is nothing but the, the localization of the diagram that I had before. Um, so, how to say this quickly? So, the, the diagram that related the, the potentials for the, the gauge potential, the uh, graph potential, and the uh, quantum K1 map can be localized in the case when the C is equal to P1. So you realize it at zero and, and infinity. And that gives you what is called the J and I functions on the nerves. Um, and these were introduced by Gimental. And then in that case, the quantum Q1 map is essentially can, can be thought as the mirror map in that particular case. And so um, since we have the relation in here, the only um, thing that probably I should just mention quickly is that uh, in order to get the relations in the quantum K theory, you have to find differential operators that will kill what is called the J function. Okay, and since we know how, how to compute the J function with all this machinery to cook up what the operators will be to kill the J function is not that hard. And so in, in this case, um, well, I don't have a lot of time, but this, this would be, for instance, the differential operator. I don't have time to, to explain what all of this means, but the, I, I, we know exactly what would be the differential operator. It is a, what we need to do is to look at what operator kills the, the, um, the the I function of the toric, co the toric quotient, and then we cook up as some sort of symmetrization um, operator that will kill the J function, it will make it vanish, and in that way we obtain relations. And just those relations happen to be the ones that you want in order to prove that the quantum K theory has the, the presentation that you want. And that's more or less the, the idea. So um, I think I'll, I'll stop there so that people can go to the airport. Questions for our speaker? And one question. Can you do something like that? I, I, I think you can do something like that for a classical G of mod P quotient with the... Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, actually, I, I, I think it's, it's proven, but only in the past like, 20 years, I would say. Even the presentation for the toric K, for the K theory of toric um, uh, varieties has been done but yeah, you can do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, essentially, classically, you can, but you know, that's not what we're after. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any more questions? No, that's for knowledge. Eduardo. Yes. Yes.